Okay, so uh, let's be more engaging. I want to hear from all of you today. Okay, I'm sure some of you guys are already a uh, entrepreneur, and I need to know. Okay, give me give me more feedback. I want to know if you guys are already an entrepreneur. Okay, if you guys are already an entrepreneur, reply yes. And if you employee or want to be entrepreneur, you can reply no. Okay, come on, give me some feedback. I want to see. Uh, I'm, I'm actually looking at the comment here. Okay, uh, if you are already entrepreneur, type yes. If you want to be an entrepreneur or not yet become an entrepreneur, type no. So now we are here at the junction that we want to invite the speaker today to share with us the real identity of an entrepreneur. It's a very interesting topic, right? I'm sure everybody have their own idea of. Is of what is an uh, entrepreneur? Entrepreneur could be you have your own shop where you are running on your own, don't have empl employees at all, or you can be a owner or CEO of a listed company, also an entrepreneur. So the real identity of entrepreneur will be shared by Mr. Logiman. Okay, he's a regional manager of MCM, and of course he got more than ten years experience, lah. Okay, not only working and also helping a lot of businesses along the way to grow better. And today we are also working with a few companies already. Uh, of course, with MCM today. And uh, without further ado, let's uh, welcome Mr. Lohiman to share what is the real identity of an entrepreneur. Thanks, moderator, and good evening, everyone. I'm glad to have a great opportunity to share my past experiences with all of you. For more than a decade, I have been meeting up with hundreds of entrepreneurs while handling, licensing, and even incubating some of them. And today's topic, I will be presenting based on my personal theoretical experience and I hope my sharing can bring a lot of tips and techniques that work for with you. Before I dive into the content, did you know that a few categories of entrepreneurs exist? Have you heard of entrepreneur, solopreneur and wannapreneur? Do you think which group you belong to? Please comment. One for an entrepreneur, two for solopreneur, and three for a wannapreneur. Yes, <laughs> there's someone who answered for entrepreneur. Basically, there is no right or wrong, and it is just a different perspective. Do you know what is the difference? In layman terms, wannapreneur refers to the individual who wants to be an entrepreneur. But without realizing their conditions, it's already stagnant in their entrepreneurial journey. Or maybe we can say that they have stayed a too long time in their comfort zone. As solopreneurs, normally are technical people in their industry and they are always confidently working by themselves to achieve their business goal or personal career developments. It's like a rainbow everything will be done by themselves. For entrepreneur, will be based on forming a team as fundamental and always evolving and keep aiming for higher goal. Either you are a business owner or an employee, you need to identify yourself which category you want to achieve your personal career goal. If you are already an entrepreneur, congratulations on your achievement. But do you want your team to be like you? Let's dive into the content. A basic understanding of becoming an entrepreneur is not magic, talent, and it's nothing to do with genes. If you Google, it's all about creating a new business, bearing most of the risks, and enjoying the rewards. For me, being an entrepreneur has a wide range of meaning. In the extremes, an entrepreneur is a person of high attitude who pioneers change or anyone who wants to work for themselves. There are so many people who talk about entrepreneurship, but there are still a lot of them who have a misconception thought. What is a normal misconception toward an entrepreneur? There are a lot, but I summarize them to discuss here. Night number one, entrepreneurs are always inventors. It seems like many inventors are also entrepreneurs, but numerous successful entrepreneurs are not inventors. For example, Ray Kroc did not invent the fast food franchise, 
but his innovative ideas made McDonald's the largest fast food enterprise in the world. Successful entrepreneurs use creative and innovative ideas in their ventures, and this characteristic can be learned by all of us. Mike number two, entrepreneurs are doers, not thinkers. What do you think? <laughs> okay. Although entrepreneurs tend to be action-oriented, they are also thinkers. Why? Entrepreneurs are often very methodical people who plan their moves carefully. They also have other alternative sets up if their plans fail. That's mean they are both thinkers and doers. There is a quote by Warren Buffett, someone sitting in the shade today because someone planted a tree long time ago. <laughs> okay, Mike number three, entrepreneurs are born, not made. Some entrepreneurs and non-entrepreneurs say that characteristics of entrepreneurs can be taught, learned. And some said entrepreneurial characteristics are innate traits, and one must be born with them to become an entrepreneur. However, research has proven that entrepreneurship can be taught and studied. Normally, entrepreneurship has models, processes, and case study that allow it to be learned. Let's see the mic number four. Okay. Entrepreneurs are academic and social misfits. This belief arises because some business owners started their business uh, the, the, the business only after dropping out from school or quitting a job. Historical, educational, and social organizations did not recognize entrepreneurs. But today, the entrepreneur is no longer considered a misfit. They are now viewed as professionals. And some of them are utilizing the triangle model. Quality, time, and cost. Mike number five. Entrepreneur must fit the profile. What does it mean? Many books and articles have presented checklists of characteristics of the successful entrepreneur. These lists were neither validated or complete. They were based on case study and research finding among the achievement-oriented people. Today, we realize that a standard entrepreneurial profile is hard to compile. Many successful entrepreneurs did not have all the profile when they started their ventures. Most of them are still learning from each other. Entrepreneur needs its money. A venture indeed needs capital to survive. It is also true that a large number of business failures occur because of a lack of adequate financing. To entrepreneurs, money is a resource but not an end in itself. That is why they need to equip with financial or cost management knowledge. Entrepreneur needs is luck. To be at the right place at the right time is always an advantage. However, luck happens when preparations meet opportunity. What is important and needed for the entrepreneur to seize an opportunity are planning, preparations, determinations, desire, knowledge, and innovativeness. According to business research, luck account is up to 30% of business success. It really depends on setting the stage for luck in business success. Okay, my number eight. For entrepreneurs, ignorance is bliss. This is interesting. There are so many people said, too much planning and evaluation lead to constant problems. I'm not sure you agree or not. This statement is not true today in these competitive markets. The key factors to keep successful entrepreneurs are detailed plan and preparations. How does it work? We need to identify a venture strengths and weaknesses, set up a clear timetables with contingency for handling problems and minimize this problem through carefully strategy formulations. For example, do you want your company growth at 30% with 300% team effort or do you want 300% growth with 100% team effort? 
This consequence is based on multiplying the team efficiencies. It depends what you want. Mic number nine. Entrepreneurs are extreme risk takers, or someone said are gamblers. The concept of risk is a major element in the entrepreneurial process. However, the public perception is that most entrepreneurs are high risk takers. But there are a lot of successful entrepreneurs who always search for information and do planning before taking any actions. This means that entrepreneurs are usually working on moderate and calculated risk, not gamblers. My number 10. Entrepreneurs seek success but experience high failure rates. Many entrepreneurs indeed suffer several failures before they are successful. Basically, failures can teach many lessons to entrepreneurs and often lead to future successes, provided they always learn from their failures and also the failures of others, which act as a form of guidance and direction for their future. Try to become rational, not driven by your emotion. Okay, these are the 10 mites that have been circulating all the time. But how much do you aware of the entrepreneurial major attributes? Let's see. Okay, now let us understand more about what is the major attributes of the entrepreneurial view identity. If you Google it, there are various characteristics. It should be more than 15, but I summarize it into six core groups. Which group do you think is the highest impact? You may type in the comment box. Okay, let's see the first group. According to the research statistics, for group one creativity, the statistic show 6.2% in successful entrepreneurships. This refers to the business acumen, enhancement of creativity and innovations. Thinking outside the box or innovativeness is important for us to gain a competitive advantage in the ventures. Especially, we can produce unique goods and services for customers. Creativity is not inherited. It can be learned you may try starting to look into different perspectives when you're facing a challenges. Let's see group two. Personality at 10.4%. Entrepreneurs typically have an abundance of flexibility, independence, confidence, and optimism in their ability to succeed. That means we need to adapt to any changing demands from customers and businesses. If there are hiccups, mean we are closing the steps on the road to success. Always keep reminding ourselves what is our ultimate goal. Group 3, desire for success is also at 10.4% and this is mandatory to have tolerance of failures internal locus of control, this means belief in the result of your own abilities and drive to achieve. We as entrepreneurs always eliminate to become disappointed, discouraged or depressed by failure. Failure is a learning experience. In difficult times, try look for opportunities. I always believe that the success or failure of the ventures depend on ourselves. If they are accomplishment and setbacks, should be under our control and influence. But this is not about being driven wholly to make money. To entrepreneurs, money is simply a symbol of achievement, not the driving motive. Let's see on groups four. Leadership is slightly higher at 12.5%. It's referred to the skill for team building, organizing, ability to set the vision, and seeking feedback for improvement. Building a venture from the very beginning is not easy. So, entrepreneurs know how to put the right people together to accomplish a task by effectively organizing the resources to transform it into reality. I always remind myself, 
what I want to achieve. Stay on the right track all the time and make sure the team member have crystal clear objectives and directions. Sometimes we may need to actively seek and use feedback to improve our team performance. Okay, group five, restaking at 16.7% is the second highest statistic. By identifying the risk appetite and scaling the opportunity orientations, we are not one risk takers and should initiate as calculated risk taker. When we participate in any ventures, we need to be sensitive to numbers in a carefully thought out manner. This may often avoid taking unnecessary risks. We always focus and start on opportunities rather than on resources, structure, or strategy. We always begin with opportunities and let our understanding guide us to other important issues. In many cases, we are searching for new business opportunity by observing the same events. Other people do or seeing something different from them. By analyzing the different perspective, we are capable of seizing extraordinary opportunities. Okay, let's see the top rated statistics. In this final group, energy is the major contribution to the entrepreneurial journey at 43.8%. This is include high level energy, commitment, initiatives, and responsibilities. Are you surprised by these statistics? There's a reason behind. As entrepreneurs, we need to have more energetic than average persons with a high level of energy and commitment to cope with the extraordinary workload and the stressful demands to overcome business threatening mistakes and obstacles. For example, if you are going on your first date, do you like your partner to keep silent and unconcerned about you? Or do you like him or her to be engaged and committed to you? It seems like high energy also gives us some impact in the real life. Okay, how do we maintain or boost our energy? There are a lot of ways and you just need to Google it. For me, I always control my stress as priority and maintain physical and mental balancing. Or sometimes, I will take a deep breath if facing some challenges. Okay, this is a summary of the characteristics that define an entrepreneurial real identity. In order to form a high performance team or department in your entrepreneurial journey, you may have to understand and leverage these six core groups so that they can help your business. Besides this, have you ever thought that what is the difference between entrepreneurs and businessmen? Let's see the minor differences. Businessmen versus entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs are not synonyms with businessmen, especially small businessmen. This is due to the fact that not all businessmen are entrepreneurs. Do you get me? <laughs> okay. However, all entrepreneurs are businessmen. Businessmen do have the characteristics of most entrepreneurs, but those characteristics are at a lower stage compared to entrepreneurs. Several characteristics can be used to differentiate the small businessman and the entrepreneur. Let's see the businessman. Number one, engage in business activity for the purpose in a tested and proven market. It's really conservative. Okay, how about entrepreneur? Start the ventures, assume leadership, and expand the ventures to the fulfill personal goals and attain self accomplishment. Number second, moderate risk taker. Number third is involved by taking a calculated risk in priority. These are the main differences, and it really doesn't matter for either big businessmen or entrepreneurs. Okay, the key takeaway as entrepreneur is we have catered the basic understanding of entrepreneurs, 10 misconceptions if they 
we either learn or hire the services of those who possess the qualities we lack. If you still got a lot of questions, you may post them in the comment chat and the facilitator will assist with that. Okay, that's all. Back to you, moderator. Thank you. All right. So that's uh, such an interesting uh, sharing by Mr. Heeman, right? He was talking about a few characteristics and we see the energy, high energy is actually very important to be an entrepreneur. But of course, some of us want to be an entrepreneur. I'm talking about the wannabes, huh? want to be entrepreneurs. They are just want to take risks at all, just want to try things out. Or maybe just want to be a boss. Some of us also took the, uh, you know, wrong step uh, just by one it's nice to be called a CEO and a boss, right? So some of us also went into entrepreneurship and also fear, face the failures. But I believe, as uh, Mr. Himan said just now, the last part, the energy have to be there, right? Like it or not, the entrepreneurs, the CEO have to put the most commitment and also the most effort. Nicely shared, huh, Mr. Himan, very nicely explained the characteristic. I believe all our uh, guests and also our viewers today know a little bit more about what is there, okay, to be an entrepreneur. All right, thank you again.